And joining us now is John Elliott, managing partner at Brighton Strategy Group and the chief spokesman for the National Security Council under former President Donald Trump. John, great to have you back on. All right, let's talk more about the standoff between Senate Democrats, including Chuck Schumer and Republican Tommy Tuberville. Your thoughts on this, and do you think that this is hurting military readiness? Uh, no, not at all, Tracy. First of all, it's great to join you here once again. But off the top, what, what you could say is that, look, this is something that the Democrats actually did when I was on the Senate Armed Services Committee for a long time under Republican Chairman John Warner. The ranking member of that committee actually held up the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and actually had him retire early, earlier for a social issue that he disagreed with at that time, and it was really protecting Hillary Clinton then. So this is a tool that both parties use, particularly when it comes to when somebody, and in that case, that was just a social view that, that the Democrats had. In this case, you actually have a, you have a Secretary of Defense unilaterally changing a policy on abortion when that needs to come through Congress, that needs to come through the Senate. And so Tommy Tuberville has only a few tools at his disposal and one of them is to say, look, that is not right. And if you gave him more tools, great, he would use another tool. But right now, that is one of the most powerful things, is to put a hold on. And look, it got resolved. You got the commandant of the Marine Corps. You got the chairman and joint chiefs ultimately confirmed. And so that's something that, but he's still going to have his hold, Tommy is, before they actually change the policy. So good on him for releasing the holds on the top guys. But one, to your point, there was no national security put at risk. It's obviously good to have the permanent people in place, and that's going to happen now while he still keeps the pressure on the administration. Yeah, now I'm going to turn to uh, Ukrainian Pre President Volodymyr Zelensky. He was in Washington today, uh, in part seeking more money for the war in Ukraine. However, as we heard, not everyone is on board. A number of lawmakers, well, they want accountability. They want to see where the money is going. And then there are some who feel, you know, we should fund Ukraine for as long as it takes. That said, I mean, how long will this take? Bloomberg is reporting that a senior official from one of the G7 countries is saying this conflict could last six or seven more years. I mean, John, that's a long time. Is this sustainable? No, it's absolutely not sustainable. We've by some counts, I know your T up had it at about 117, 120 billion. In some, if you look at all the humanitarian aid put in there as well, it's close to 200 billion at this point. And look, to just close the border altogether would take about 20 billion dollars. So this is 10 times what it would take to to close our border. Meantime, we're concerned about putting more money. There's now 24 billion proposed more money to secure Ukraine's borders. If you take a step back, Tracy, we would never be in this issue if Trump had been president or if he remained president because Putin never invaded Ukraine, never invaded any country, any neighboring country on his watch when President Trump was in there because President Trump was somebody who was respected. When you look at the way that Biden handled the disastrous pullout from Afghanistan, still held nobody from the military or his chain of command responsible for that or accountable for that. That is something that telegraphs weakness. That's why we have an issue with now a 19-month war in Ukraine. And the taxpayers are fed up with paying this uh, to that. And just let me add one more thing there. If you look at Zelensky came to the UN last night or yesterday and was actually speaking to the UN in this commando outfit. I mean, he looked like somebody from the John Fetterman changing the rules in the Senate. I mean, put on a tie if you're going to come begging for money from the UN and the international community. Uh, because people are tired about spending this and, and not paying attention to our own priorities here in the U.S. John, something else on top of mind. I want to talk about that uh, Marine Corps F-35 fighter jet crash. What more can you tell us about this? I mean, it seems there's like a lot more questions than answers here, leaving maybe some to wonder, should we be concerned about our military aircrafts and their capabilities? Well, certainly, Tracy, I know we have just got a small amount of time here. What I would say is that here with the F-35 fighter that crashed there, that is a very sophisticated aircraft. It costs close to three times as, as much as the F-16 fighters that are really kind of like the worker workhorses uh, up, up to now for the last 20 years. So these are huge jets, probably cost about $150 billion, between $117 and $170 billion, sorry, million dollars per aircraft. The uh, These are very expensive jets. To have two of them go down in recent uh, a couple of years now is something that's very concerning. The Commandant of the Marine Corps ordered a stand down or a safety stand down of the entire fleet right now, not only F 35s, but across the board to make sure that we're following safety standards. And that's the right thing. Meantime, we just need to get to the bottom of why these really, really expensive aircraft 
are not performing up to what the taxpayers expect. John, real quick, we have probably maybe 30 seconds left or so. Uh, something else in the news that I found pretty interesting. The Wall Street Journal is reporting China's fighter jets uh, aren't just flying around Taiwan. They're actually practicing amid a surge of activity there from Beijing. Uh, this is aimed in part on trying to stop the U.S. from intervening should try, China try to invade Taiwan. Your thoughts on that, John, and how concerned are you about this? Well, this is very concerning, Tracy. The, once again, this comes back to the weakness that Biden is telegraphing on the world stage. Never under Trump's presidency were, were the Chinese poking at Taiwan, flying into their space, actually having training exercises, to your point here. And what they do is they sense weakness, and so they're looking and taking action the way they never were before. President Trump, once again, he was driving them to the biggest, the toughest trade deals ever. He put sanctions, the toughest ones, on, on Xi, and so she respected President Trump, and here this is something where they're really poking at the bear, if we're the bear here, they're poking at the U.S. to just try to see how much they can get away with, and it's just a sign of our own weakness at the top. Well, John, thanks so much for your insights. Always appreciate having you on. Thank you, Tracy.